We have Beth Douglas. Tell us, uh, um, you know, about your, your children real quick. So I have uh, three kids, two girls and a boy, a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a three-year-old. Okay, let's go right down the line. Uh, Introduce Jill. yourself. Yep. Uh, Jill St. Peter, and I have three boys, uh, three, four, and seven. My name is Kim Jacobs, and I have a daughter, Danielle, that's 33, and a son that's 22, and I have two grandsons and a granddaughter. Hi, I'm Stacy Eaton, and I have two kids, a five-year-old and a three-year-old. Awesome. Uh, in case you didn't know, Kim is Gail's sister, and that's why she, as well as Gail, have a lot of hair. <laughs> you're, so, you're so blessed. She married a guy that doesn't have much. Gail, Gail did, not Carl. <laughs> Carl, you're good. You have plenty. You're good. Um, so we have some questions for you, and um, we're going to go quickly. I wanted to ask... Uh, whoever wants to go first is fine. What challenges do you have raising your children right now, and how are you managing that effectively? I'll go first. <laughs> so as I was thinking about motherhood, you, you have one hand and the other hand. On one hand, you have all the challenges that come with it. You have um, the stressful moments, the overwhelming um, moments and like tantrums and everything that goes with that. Hello, somebody. I know I'm not the only one. And then on the other hand, you like have. Like I said in the first service, the tantrum side comes from Caleb, not so much Stacy, I think. <laughs> Just kidding, Caleb. You don't have tantrums anymore. And then on the other hand, you have the beauty of motherhood. You have just the laughter, the joy, the growing together, the relationship that you have with your kids and everything that goes along with it, the beauty of it. Um, so some ways that I deal with it is I always have to make sure that I spend time with God first. I have to do it in the morning. I know it's different for people, but like I know some people do it at night, but I have to do it in the morning. I either do it before they wake up or while they're eating breakfast, and it just sets me up for my day. I need a lot of patience and self-control, so um, by doing so, I need to get in the Word every day and spend time with Jesus and His presence, and it really just launches me for my day. Yeah. And just another like practical thing is, uh, like, I need some me time on the weekends, alone from my kids, and Caleb's super great about that as well, so yeah. So I think when it comes to challenges that we're facing in this world, I think we live in a world right now where there's no, you know, regard for godly behavior, uh, for godly entertainment, whether it's books, shows, activities. Um, I think our children are being enticed and induced by sin, uh, you know, seduced by sin. Um, and I think what's important for us, you know, the, the world wants to mold and shape our children right now. And I think what's so important for us to realize is that our children do not know what's best for them. And that is our place and our job to stand for them and to figure out exactly what the Lord wants. And that alone brings you to your knees because you are desperate for God because in those moments you need the Lord. You don't know what's best for your kids sometimes either because whether it's toddlers or it's up to teens, there is a uh, massive emotions and they are intimidating, honestly, and they can sway us and make us look in different directions, but we have to gaze and fix our eyes on the Lord because he is our answer and he is the one who will lead us through their challenges. Um, so I think just realizing that you are standing in that place, that is your job and God has called us for such a job as that. I had similar thinking, Jill, um, just that we, in the time that we're in and the things that our kids are being exposed to, whether through television or books or friends or whatever, um, just that we are the gatekeepers and we are the ones that are there um, that God has placed in their lives to protect them and to make those um, decisions. Sometimes it's hard to... Um, to say no to them because they can be quite convincing. Um, but just remembering to say no, you know, like we're not going to watch these shows because they um, don't glorify God. But then also bringing it back to the word and making sure that 
our kids understand why are we saying that they can't watch the show that everybody else watches or why can't they do this that everybody else is doing um, bringing it back to the Bible and showing them like this is what God's desire is for us and um, helping them to see that we want to glorify God in all that we're doing and we do that by following what the word says and that will help them to have discernment later on when they get older and they're making choices for themselves because they can always go back to the word always go back to the bible so good um and then for those of you who are raised still raising kids um, how are you balancing all um you know all of your priorities as a mom and a wife and everything else that you're doing and 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 staying close to and serving the Lord. Like, how do you do that? How are you balancing that? <laughs> I, I love this question. Um, so I think as moms, we so easily feel so overwhelmed by all the buckets we have to fill. And, um, and practically speaking, and I think that leads us to our knees, And but practically speaking, I think what the Lord has taught me is to recognize the season that you're in, in motherhood. Um, and within that season, what priorities he wants for that particular season. Um, and when you know the priorities, because you're always in a season, right? And you're, the Lord is always with you. And so when you understand what he wants in that season, you can fix directly on that. And I think it's so easy as moms to get distracted. And I think that's a tactic of the enemy because as a mom, what do we all feel? Like we're not doing enough. This is just, there's, we're never doing enough. There's always more. And the enemy wants us to take our focus on those non-essential priorities and, and confuse us and make us feel like we're not worthy and we're not enough when really he has called us, you know, to specific priorities. Um, and one other thing I want to know is just as a wife, as a mom, and you're serving your family, you know, you, that is an act of worship, a fierce act of worship. You are serving the Lord in that. And, and that's powerful. And he will lead you in the other directions that he wants you to serve in. Um, and one quick story that the Lord brought to my mind is um, I was just laughing with him the other day about, because oh, it's our first year homeschooling. And one of our big um, mountains this year is laundry, uh, physical laundry. And I was saying to him, like, you know, I will do it again if you want me to, but I am not doing laundry. And, and I was just laughing with him. And, um, and so, you know, it's funny, though, because when you start telling the author of time, you know, that you have no time, what does he do? He gives you that time. And, you know, it's so powerful when you submit your time to him and he expands it because that's just what he does. And it's so good. And I think he allows us to feel that weight sometimes to, to allow us to realize that we have a choice in that, in those feelings to just rejoice and look to him. And there's such power in that. I, I definitely agree. Um, looking at all of the duties that we have as a mom, as a wife, taking care of the home, washing the dishes, doing the laundry, changing bottoms of babies and feeding them, and all the things that we have to do, having a spirit of um, worship and joy while we're doing that, and, and remembering that we are serving the Lord by serving our families, and the joy that we show while we're doing those tasks will also just be such an example for our children to see that, that, um, that we can glorify God in everything that we do. Um, and I think that, you know, sometimes I know I get so busy and I overextend myself more than I probably should. And so balancing is probably not my forte. Um, but so I stay up late to try to do all the things. So then in the morning when I try to get up early to do my devotions, that doesn't always happen. Um, and so I sometimes am doing my devotions while my kids are coming into me while I'm, you know, still sitting in bed. And um, so even though I'd rather do it before they wake up, they're sometimes joining me in my room doing that. But it's such a good example for them, too, to see mommy praying and reading her Bible in front of them so that they can see this is what I need to do in order to pour out to them throughout the day. 
Yes to everything that you guys were saying. That's super good. I think, Jill, in the first service, you said there's no perfect formula to get everything in order, to have all our priorities straight. But I want to encourage somebody today that even if you cannot do it all, there is so much grace in Jesus. He gives us grace. We're not going to have perfect days. Not every day is going to be the exact same. Not every day is going to be um, huge smiles on our faces. Um, So there's just so much grace in Jesus. And we just really need to look to him for every single one of our needs. You mean you, you have bad days? You're not always smiling? Wow. Um, I wanted to turn it over to Kim. Now, uh, I've known Kim since, I don't know, 1975, and she's been my sister-in-law for 40, going on 43 years. I have so much admiration for you, Kim. Um, I watched you as you were a single mom uh, for what, six, how many years? Six yes. years. Yeah. And you raised Danielle, and she's an amazing young lady. Is she here today? She's an amazing young lady who now is a mother. And then you married Carl back in 1998. And they together have a child named Sam, and he's amazing as well. They both are serving Jesus. And I wanted to ask you, there's, you, you bring a lot to the table because your kids are raised for quite a while now. Um, what advice would you give to single moms, since you were one for that time in your life, what would you give to single moms that might be here today? Well, I first want to say that any advice I give is learned from my mom or from my mistakes. And, right, mom? (laughs) Um, I have a big heart for single moms. You know, sometimes the work is double because you don't have that other partner with you to help you. And there's a lot of times you feel alone, and that is the time you, you just need to draw near to God because he can fill that void. Um, and, and I had a great support system, my family, um, close friends. Uh, my, my daughter had great male, male role models, uh, my two brother-in-laws and my brother, um, that played a big part in our family. And But also God can fill that void in them, too, and... And if you're a single mom from a result of a bad relationship, take that time to show your kids how to forgive because they they watch everything you do. And it it can be hard, but God can get you through that. And and today we really need to learn to love and forgive. Um, And don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, just um, sometimes it can... Our pride gets in the way, but, you know, there's so many wonderful people, especially in our church, that just would love to reach out and help a single mom. For sure. Amen to that. Learning pod for one. <laughs> um, Kim, I'm going to just have you back to back here. So the other thing about Kim having raised her children is I know Sam, I think, went to public school for his, his whole, whole time yeah. and Danielle at least partially. Whereas these other ladies you've chosen at this time, I know, uh, Jill, you had your children in public school for a while. Did you, Beth, as well? And, and so right now, currently, they're homeschooling because of the changes that are going on in the school systems. Um, but how would you, how, how can any parent here, um, especially moms, how can they participate in raising a strong child that is in the public school system? What, what can they be thinking about and doing? Well, first of all, Carl and I came together as, a, as, as one under God, and we made sure that our family was God-centered. And when we had decided to have Sam in public school, we were, we were determined that we were going to be the biggest influence in his that's life. And, and that's what you got to do. you got to invest time into your child. Um, you know, you know your kids' friends and their parents. Don't yeah. just send them off. Good. And think, oh, I'm getting a break. So send them off. <laughs> know them. That is your right to know where your kid is at all times. Um, also, you know, just reinforce. I know, you know, Sam was challenged sometimes. Well, he didn't consider it a challenge, but I saw he was going through. He, he came home one time, and he's like, Mom, some kid ran by me and said, whispered, evolution. And, and his, you know, as he walked by, and, and I'm like, I knew what the kid was doing. But Sam stood strong and you know I didn't woo him and say you know poor Sam I was like you know what that's your reinforce their belief that they 
no one can take that away from them, that they, right. Jesus yeah. is their savior. No one, not a school teacher, nothing that they teach can take that away. And, you know, your kids watch you all the time. So be, you know, have your godly values ex- displayed all the time. You know, live it every day in front of them. Um, also, you know, if your child s- strays away, go after them. Go to the ends of this earth to track them, get yeah. them back on track. And it may not make them happy. They may tell you it's none of your business. And you know what? That's just temporary because they do come around. They come back. You're not <clears> talking <throat> about Danny girl, are you? <laughs> yeah, I had a, my prodigal daughter. She came back, and I'll tell you, she's the fiercest mama bear there is. Yes, she, is. she sure is. She really is. That's so good. And the last question, I wish we could just keep going, but Beth, could you address um, what advice would you have for younger ladies who hope to have children themselves someday? Because we have, we have an amazing, by the way, if you didn't notice, we have an absolutely amazing young adult community right here at New Hope Chapel. And um, we, we're all like helping and encouraging each other. So what would you say to that, those who are thinking, someday I want to be a mom and I'm going to be a mom? And I would just tell them that, you know, being a mom is the greatest gift, but it also is humbling and sanctifying. And um, some days you just can feel like you don't have anything left to give. And um, whether you are up all night with babies who are teething, um, but God can pour out of us. You know, they say, oh, you can't fill from an, you can't pour out from an empty cup, but with God, you can. Um, That, you know, in the scripture, it says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. And that... You know, there have been days where I have just woken up and have cried out to God and said, God, like, I don't have anything in me today. I am exhausted, and I was not my best person yesterday. But how God can take that, and he can turn the day around, and he can just pour out through us, and that knowing that there are going to be tough days, and there are going to be days that we just don't feel like we have anything left to give, but God does, and God can make all the difference. And we just have to keep leaning into him and knowing that he is our strength, not ourselves. Yes. And that's so good. All of you just so good. Um, And I think you would all agree with me that they can look forward into the future. And yes, there's some craziness going on in this world. But when you have God, I love this. I love, I love this, this little quote, two, two people can do anything if one of them is God. And as you young ladies are looking forward to your future, I don't want you to dread all the fearful stuff that you think is lying ahead. When God is with you, he will be with you through mothering, through marriage. If you're called to be single all your life, he'll be through it. He'll be right there with you all the way. And you can have a great abounding hope for the future that he has for you. Because if God is for you, who can be against you? And would you agree with that? Amen. So, ladies, you are exceptional, and you represent so many other New Hope uh, moms and women in general. We just want to thank you for coming and, and spending this time with us.